Hi everyone, uh, we'll be waiting two to three minutes before starting the webinar to accommodate for the rest of the folks who are in the middle of connecting. Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us and uh, thanks for being part of our community. My name is Valen Kolika and I will be your host for today. A few reminders before we start with the webinar. If you have uh, issues viewing the stream at any time during the presentation and are using the web browser version of Teams, please refresh your browser. If you're using the desktop app of Teams, please exit and rejoin. Uh, please note that this webinar is being recorded and uh, will be shared publicly. We will post the recordings on our community at aka.ms slash security webinars and uh, all the links that I'll be referencing, they're already in your IM. Closed captions in several languages are available during the live broadcast. Uh, you can enable them by clicking on the CC button located at the lower right corner of your screen, where, right where you entered it. So. Feel free to ask questions at any time by typing them in the live Q&A window and uh, click on the ask question button. Uh, be aware that any questions you post will be publicly visible. However, if you prefer, you can post your question anonymously by checking the box right below where you entered it. Now we often get uh, many questions on these webinars and uh, we will do our best to respond to all of them in real time. In the event, if the answer was not provided or if you may have additional questions post this event, please don't hesitate to raise them on our Azure Network Security Forum at aka.ms slash Azure Network Security Community. If you're listening to this after the fact as a recording, that's also a great place to ask a question. Now we love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars and you can do so that at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. I would like to invite you to join our public community by visiting aka.ms slash security community. That's the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements. On our community, you can speak directly to our engineering teams that create our security products. 
you'll be able to influence our product designs and get early access to changes by doing things like participating in private previews, which you can sign up at aka.ms slash security PRP. You can request features, give feedback, review our product roadmaps, register for events or join webinars like this. We believe that the best way to improve our products is by removing any barriers between you and the people that create them. So we hope you'll join us. In today's session, Ashish Kapila will uh, guide us through getting started with Azure Firewall Manager. Ashish is a senior program manager with our Azure Network Security team. And uh, without further ado, I'll turn it over to him. Ashish, the floor is yours. Thank you, Valen. Uh, good day, everyone, and thank you for joining uh, the webinar. Uh, today we are going to uh, talk about Azure Firewall manager and before we start i would like to ask you a couple of questions through poll everywhere and uh Balan, can i request you to activate okay so they are activated uh you should see those now and uh, the question which i have is just to understand uh how many firewalls uh, do you kind of manage uh, within azure as of today is it one two three four to six and these numbers here so it would be great to get your feedback yeah, and this, the link to it has been already posted in the IM. Uh, that is uh, polev.com slash security webinar. I hope you guys can uh, access the link. Yep. Yeah. OK, there you go. We are seeing some responses now. So majority looks like between one to three then, yeah. Cool. We'll move on to the next one. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Oh, they're already answering the next one. That's perfect. Yeah, so this is to understand how how often do you kind of update uh, the firewall rules? And I can see that some of uh, us kind of uh, update yearly as well. So this is great. Yeah, so this this will help me understand uh, the different uh, uh, type of customers we have, and then I'll kind of share how Firewall Manager can help you when it comes down to managing numbers of firewalls and number of firewall rules from an Azure Firewall perspective. And how right. easy it is to update as well. So, OK, cool. Definitely, yeah. OK, I'll start sharing my screen now so we can go to the presentation. Sounds good. All right, thank you uh, for uh, for the uh, poll EV uh, responses. Uh, so as I said, yeah, my name is Ashish Kapila. I'm the senior program manager uh, in the network uh, security engineering team uh, in Microsoft. And today we are going to cover uh, Azure Firewall Manager. And basically Azure Firewall Manager is uh, one place to uh, manage all your security policies and it's the management service for Azure Firewall. So this is kind of uh, the uh, summary as to what Azure Firewall Manager can do today, and we will go through individual uh, all these individual points in detail as well uh, in the coming slides. So the first thing uh, which uh, Firewall Manager uh, gives you when you are using Azure Firewall is it gives you the centralized uh, firewall management, which means that you can see all your Azure firewalls uh, within your tenant across subscriptions, across regions. You can see all that information in one dashboard. Plus you see the policies, uh, all the uh, uh, firewall policies which you have. Uh, and also it gives you uh, an option uh, to have 
parent policies and child policies or a global policy or a local policy and that kind of helps you to enforce uh, uh, multiple uh, policies uh, to all your firewalls uh, within your uh, tenant it works with the devops model as uh, it's uh, cloud native so you can use terraform rest or powershell whatever you would like to prefer uh, to automate uh, the management of uh, the policies and the firewalls and as i said it works across uh, regions subscriptions and deployments within your tenant azure firewall manager it supports two deployment architecture uh, one is secure virtual hub and another one is hub virtual network secure virtual hub is the deployment model when you're using azure virtual van hub so if you if you have if you're planning to use uh, azure virtual van to automate uh, your uh, routing and everything so then you can use uh, azure firewall uh, in a secure virtual hub where you can manage your security and routing policies. So it's the same hub and spoke topology where you have your uh, VNets, uh, hub VNets connected uh, to, uh, uh, to the spoke network where you have the Azure firewall. And not only that, you can connect your branches, uh, on-prem environments, and you can have uh, a site to site VPN. You get like a complete view of uh, uh, like a complete set of Azure networking services in the Azure virtual van. So we'll go that uh, in detail later on as well. Uh, the second option is the hub virtual network. So this is a, a normal uh, a virtual network which you have in Azure uh, where you create a hub virtual network, but you can convert it to a, a firewall manager managed hub virtual network. And again, this can be used for the security and routing policies as well. With Firewall Manager, as you can configure your uh, policies, that kind of gives you uh, the central routing uh, where you don't have uh, to manipulate the user-defined routes and, th and things. And that is when you're doing the Azure Virtual uh, VAN uh, uh, deployment. Azure Firewall Manager also integrates uh, with third-party partners. Uh, you can use uh, uh, third-party uh, partners like iBoss, Zscaler, uh, and uh, uh, Checkpoint in conjunction with Azure Firewall, and we'll cover that as well. So these are the recent updates uh, from an Azure Firewall Manager perspective. Uh, as I covered in my previous webinar uh, on Azure Firewall, that you can configure Azure Firewall to do forced tunneling, which means that you can forward all the internet bound traffic to an NVA in Azure or to an on-prem, depending on the requirement. So in uh, Azure Firewall Manager, uh, in the hub virtual network deployment, now you can do force tunneling as well. We have the security providers uh, too, which are available uh, in the virtual hub. As you can see, Zscaler, Checkpoint, and IBOS, so you can use them. Uh, multiple public IP support in secure virtual hub as well. Uh, from a firewall policy perspective, you can use IP groups, uh, custom DNS and DNS proxy. Again, I covered that in the previous webinar. Uh, and also in the firewall policy, you can uh, uh, manage or whitelist uh, any kind of false positives, which you may see from a threat intelligence uh, perspective as well, because firewall uses Azure Firewall uses threat intel. And if there are any uh, whitelisting you have to do, uh, you can do it in the central firewall policy using Firewall Manager. Right, so these are the two deployment architecture when it comes down to the Firewall Manager. First one, as I was saying, is the hub virtual network, which is a normal virtual network which you can convert into a hub virtual network and you can manage it using the Azure Firewall Manager. The benefit of it, this is that you can have multiple hub VNets and you can use Azure Firewall Manager to push your policies and everything to all your firewalls. So you don't have to go and individually uh, change the rules on each Azure Firewall. With Firewall Manager, you can just uh, centrally create the policies and you can push it to multiple Azure Firewalls. The second option is the Secure Virtual Hub, which we will go in more detail uh, as well. Uh, the VBAN firewalls. So with virtual VAN, as you can see over here, you have Azure Firewall in the secure VHub and you have your branch offices connected to it on the VBAN. 
it also integrates with third party. So if you want to send all internet bound traffic to any of these third party uh, uh, providers, you can always use that as well. OK, so what is virtual VAN? So as I was saying, virtual VAN is like a service in Azure, which kind of brings all your networking and routing functionalities into a single or a centralized uh, uh, view. It You can use uh, all these uh, virtual, uh, sorry, Azure networking connectivity uh, features like site to site, point to site, express route and all that. The, the main thing here is that with virtual van, you have dynamic routing, so you don't have to create those UDRs and things. It kind of uh, does the dynamic routing. It scales out. You have like the one interface to manage uh, your network. Uh, you can have SDN connectivity as well with virtual van, as you can see over here that uh, with virtual van, you have your uh, uh, Azure VNets. You have your headquarters connected to your virtual VVAN using Express route. You've got branches connected using SD WAN, and you have your normal user connecting to virtual WAN using point to site VPN. So even the clients, like when they use their mobile application to access maybe uh, uh, some applications which are in Azure or anything, they can do a point to site and the traffic can go through uh, the virtual WAN. But the main thing is uh, that it uh, does the dynamic routing and dynamic scaling based on the uh, traffic. How does uh, Azure Firewall fits in? As you can see with virtual van, you have a hub network and in that hub you have your Azure Firewall, right? So all your clients and everything uh, are or your branches or your uh, Azure specific traffic. It's all getting routed through your hub virtual network and based on the policies configured on your Azure Firewall in the hub, uh, you uh, allow the traffic uh, to either to branch to branch or from branch to internet or to uh, Office 365 or to a third party like Zscaler or uh, iBoss. Now, what kind of policies you can configure? So there are various policies which you can configure here, like Office 365 traffic, where you can see that Office 365 traffic uh, can go directly from a branch to Office 365, or you can configure that the Office 365 traffic uh, can go through uh, Azure Firewall, but it can go through the third party uh, uh, service like iBoss. You can also uh, configure policies around uh, the Azure infrastructure like VNet and things, plus the PaaS services. So you have got that flexibility in three different policies which you can see over here that you can configure Office 365, IS and PaaS services, plus you can configure the policies for your internet traffic. And as I said, Firewall Manager, uh, when you use, it can uh, push the policies across uh, hubs and regions uh, within your tenant. So if there is a requirement or an immediate requirement uh, for a change, you do not have to go to individual firewalls to make the change. You make it in the Firewall Manager and that pushes it to the firewalls. So yeah, and So if you have like, for instance, multiple uh, virtual van hub, uh, virtual van uh, configured uh, within your uh, uh, organization, then again, you can use the firewall manager. So this is just representing that how firewall manager is managing the Azure firewalls uh, within two different virtual vans. Uh, same concept, if, like branch connecting to virtual van using site to site, uh, clients connecting through point to site and on-prem connecting through express route. So you have all those services and all the traffic is managed through your uh, uh, Azure Firewall in the hub. So this is uh, how when you when you take a decision that yes, uh, we would like to use virtual van and uh, then you say uh, uh, like first first thing is that yes, you create a virtual van connectivity once you have uh, uh, created the virtual van connectivity. You enable the security in the firewall manager where you configure the three policies uh, which I was explaining earlier. So for the first policy which you can configure is for your SaaS connectivity and for this the destination will be Office 365 or you can have specific apps like Exchange, SharePoint or Skype. But and the option which you have is whether you say that local egress that from branch 
uh, 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 to Office 365 uh, will connect directly, or you can say hub to Office 365, or via a third party uh, uh, security as a service like iBoss and Zscaler. Second set of policies which you can configure here is the policies for pass connectivity. So any pass services like Azure SQL storage, app services or key vaults, you can configure that. Again, you have multiple options as to how you want that uh, uh, connectivity to work, whether you want direct connectivity, whether you want it through the hub or you want or you want to go through the Azure firewall. The third uh, policy which you can configure is for the internet traffic. And again, in this you can either use Azure Firewall uh, to direct traffic directly to internet, or you can configure to say that uh, internet bound traffic should go through my third party uh, uh, service. And if uh, you say that Azure Firewall you want to go with, then you create the security policies in the uh, in the Azure Firewall Manager, and you then define what you want to allow. If you say no, that uh, I don't want uh, the traffic to go through Azure Firewall, then you can just set up to send the traffic over to a third party, uh, third party uh, partner uh, like Zscaler and iBoss or Checkpoint. So this is how the automated routing works, and this is a snip of uh, when you have Azure Firewall uh, Manager and Azure Firewall in a virtual van scenario. Uh, you can configure, as you can see over here uh, in the uh, in here, you can see that internet traffic. You can say it can go through Azure Firewall, or you can say it goes through a third party. You can say private traffic. Private traffic, you say send uh, via Azure Firewall or send directly. So you can you have that uh, flexibility to define uh, uh, how you want the traffic uh, to uh, route. And uh, again, this is like you don't have to configure UDRs or anything. And this is all in the virtual van dynamic routing, which takes care of uh, uh, the traffic. Uh, automation or the routing and this is where you can see the option how you want to do it. Right, so this is uh, the key piece when I was asking you about uh, the uh, uh, how often do you update uh, the firewall and uh, there were like multiple uh, options and I can see that it was different from customers to customer. With Azure Firewall Manager, I was saying uh, that you can have a global policy or you can have a local policy. The benefit of having two options, global and local, is that you can, uh, uh, for instance, that your uh, company says or the security policy says that uh, 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 you do you only allow access to certain websites to everyone within the organization, right? Or you say that the threat intel uh, should always be set to deny on all my Azure firewalls in all the regions or all subscriptions. So you create a global policy and that global policy can be uh, managed through a global admin, right? You can configure R back on it and you push that global policy to all your Azure firewalls, right? Then you have the concept of local policy. So imagine that you have these three firewalls, right? But on this firewall over here, you have uh, you want to publish one of your internal uh, or one of uh, a, one of your management server onto internet. What you will do is you will create a local policy on this Azure firewall, and that you will create a DNAT rule to publish your internal resource and that you can leave it to a local admin using RBAC. So local admin can manage the local policies or the local requirement. I'll show you some use cases as well as to uh, how it, it all works. But as I said, the, the main uh, point here is that the global policy is applied to all your Azure Firewall and local policies are only uh, applied to the uh, to that particular instance of the Azure Firewall and not to everything. And this is key that uh, firewall policies can be typically shared across multiple firewalls, but the DNAT rules are firewall specific. So you cannot define DNAT rules in a global policy that has to be configured in a local policy. 
and this is this this uh, scenario is also or this feature of Azure Firewall Manager is also beneficial uh, in in the case uh, if there is like uh, an urgent uh, requirement to make changes uh, to all the firewalls, uh, then you can just uh, modify the global policy and push it. So just as an example, uh, uh, the Microsoft IT uh, also uses the Azure Firewall and the Firewall Manager. Uh, before Firewall Manager, uh, when they had to make a change, they had to make a change on all the firewall that used to take around nine hours to be pushed through. But with Firewall Manager, as it is a central uh, policy management, it will the same work could be achieved in like 15 minutes as well. So you can you can save a lot of time. It can be very very quick. So that's the benefit here. Right, so how the uh, uh, the uh, global and local policies uh, uh, processing work? Uh, as I uh, said in my previous webinar on Azure Firewall, that network rules are, the, sorry, DNAT rules are the very first uh, which get processed. After that, network rules get processed and then the application rules get processed. So same concept here, but with a global policy, you cannot use DNAT. So in the global policy, you will have network rules or application rules. So in that scenario, the network rule collection is the from the from the global policy will be processed first before the network rules in the child policy or the local policy uh, 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 will be uh, processed. So first, it's always the parent policy, then it's the local policy. So network rules uh, col uh, collections uh, from a parent policy are always prioritized. Same logic also applies to application rule collections as well. But if you have a network rule which matches the request, and if you have an application rule which matches the request, network rule will be the first which will be processed. And DNAT rules are always going to be in the local policy as they're specific to that firewall instance. Right, so this is the use case which I was talking about from an RBAC perspective. Uh, we have a TechNet article on it as well. I'll put that in here uh, uh, once we share the slides out with you guys. So imagine that uh, you have uh, uh, an organization base policy right here, and then you have uh, sales applications or database uh, applications or engineering application. What you can do is you can have uh, uh, configured the uh, organization based policy, which can only be managed through your security administrators and pushed to all the firewalls. And then you can create an RBAC role uh, for sales and database and engineering, and you can let the uh, sales uh, team create those uh, firewall policies for the local uh, uh, firewall or for their instance of firewall. So this helps you uh, to make sure that all the firewalls have at least the base policy and anything which a specific team needs, they create their own policies uh, for their firewall instance. And global uh, and only the organization based policy can only be managed through a global admin role or not a global, the security administrators plus the sales one can be done only by that local team. So you can kind of uh, do that as well. All right, so this is uh, the use case where uh, you are planning to use a uh, virtual van hub and you're looking to use the third party uh, security as a service. Uh, as you can see over here that all your traffic between VNets to VNet or VNet to branch, everything will go through your Azure firewall. But when it will come down to anything going to Internet, you can forward the traffic to your third party uh, solution. Uh, in this case, you can have Zscaler and Checkpoint and the iBoss. It simplifies the kind of connectivity because you do not have to uh, create any uh, uh, user defined routes uh, which you have, which you do typically when you don't use a uh, virtual van. All that uh, uh, routing and everything is uh, automatic or dynamic and uh, uh, the traffic uh, straight away kind of uh, goes uh, to your third party solution. And these are some of uh, the scenarios from a virtual van uh, perspective uh, with Azure Firewall. Uh, as you can see, these are uh, like the traffic flow or the policies which you can define when it comes down to uh, the Azure Firewall. 
so over here uh, again the virtual van uh, hub scenario here and you can see like uh, the branch to like branch to branch traffic can also be uh, uh, go through the azure firewall so you can kind of uh, create your uh, policies to manage uh, the traffic uh, uh, also like vnet to vnet can also go through uh, the firewall azure firewall and you can have uh, the traffic going from vnet to different branch as well you can do that you can even configure your policies related to the pass services again key vault and storage accounts or azure sql all that you can do and in this scenario you can see that there are uh, two different uh, virtual van hub and over here you can see that uh, you can send the office 365 either from a branch uh, directly to office 365 or you can send it through a third party as well uh, and yeah, so you, the, from a traffic flow perspective, you have options from branch to VNet, branch to branch, VNet to VNet, Office 365 breakout branch, and all these policies you can configure as I was showing you in that flow chart, the three policies. So yeah, so that's pretty much uh, what I have. Uh, Valen? Sure, sure. It sounds good. Sounds good. So, so if you can just mute, looks like I can. There you go. I could hear myself an echo. OK, so we do have, uh, as usual, the uh, ask speaker a question. But before we jump into that one, I would like to share another short survey that we have prepared for the for this call. So let me just present that really quickly. And uh, it's the same link that we used as before, and I will post that here shortly. Okay, and we've already got some responses. Okay. Yeah, and this is this is where uh, the RBAC model uh, with parent and local policy uh, can help you uh, to define where you say that yes, parent policy uh, gets applied uh, to or the base policy get applied to all the Azure firewalls uh, and you have your local policy for uh, uh, based on your local admin for the regions. We don't have one. I was expecting that either, but yeah. OK. <laughs> right. Well. So weekly we get firewall audited as well, just to see the process of what you use to create the rules and how the requests are, or rules are created, how the requests are processed. OK. Cool. Yeah, uh, happy to go with the Q&A as well. Uh, Perfect. OK. Ashish, while we're waiting for our other questions to come in, there's one in the chat that I think that you could elaborate on a little bit. Uh, there was a question that came in about uh, rule processing or rather policy processing order in a parent child setup. Um, and so the question was, you know, which firewall policy will take precedence, the global one or the local one? Can you go into a little bit more about uh, rule processing order? Yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, so when you uh, talk about the rule processing, it's the global policy which will always be processed first. OK, and uh, once the global policy has been processed, if there are no rules matching, then it we go to the uh, child policy, and that's where we will match. Uh, we will pro uh, match the rules. So global policy first, then child policy, and from a rule processing perspective, network rules in global policy first, then the application rules in the global policy first, 
then the network rules in the child policy and then the net, uh, application rules in the uh, child policy and dnet rules always get uh, uh, processed first and that they can only be in the child policy okay any other questions do we have or Uh, not yet, but while we're looking at that one, there is a question uh, on if there's additional price for uh, Azure Firewall. Maybe you can answer that. So I do not have that information, uh, but uh, I can we can uh, put it in the slides afterwards or I can answer it afterwards. Unless uh, Anthony, you have any information on the pricing. Yeah, I've just pasted the, the link for pricing in the chat. And it, yes, the Azure Firewall does come with a cost. Um, the bulk of the cost is uh, consumption fee. Just to think of uh, if you had a, a set of VMs running all month, you'll pay for that. Um, and then there's there's a nominal data processing fee on top of it. The details are uh, are in the, the response in the chat. Cool, thank you. I just checked the uh, the Q and A and uh, tried to submit a question myself. Looks like there's no response, but uh, we can move forward with because there's questions here in the IM and I can read that out to you. No, I, should, I can see those as well. So I'm taking okay, the new perfect. Here, right? Yes. Go, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. OK, so uh, I see that uh, the follow up question on the rule processing uh, is that uh, where somebody saying that that means that you have to add an explicit block if you want to, to prevent a child to allow it. Definitely, if that is the case in the sense, if there are some specific uh, things which you do not want even the uh, uh, local policy to have, then yes, you would need to create a deny rule in the global policy so that the child cannot uh, or the child policy like no one can create that in the child policy to allow it. Another one is I would imagine global first. Yeah, that's the rule processing order. OK, can we send Azure firewall logs to Azure Sentinel? Yes, you can uh, do that. We have a data connector uh, which you can utilize uh, uh, in the Azure Sentinel for Azure firewall and you can send the logs to Sentinel. Perfect. I think uh, I did move one from the new to published. Uh, the one where it's being asked for the more centralized solution for what other advantages and feature does Azure Firewall have that other third party solutions do not. So Azure Firewall, Azure Firewall Manager, all our network security products, they're all cloud native, right? So if you're looking to automate any of uh, uh, your uh, resource or any of these network security products, you can always automate using Terraform or REST or whatever. Plus, they're all managed solutions. So you're not managing uh, uh, anything uh, in terms of uh, VMs or load balancers and all those things. You don't have to go and update firmwares these are all managed as well. Uh, also, uh, with Azure Firewall, you get uh, you can implement them in availability zones as well in Azure. So you get the 99.99% SLA as well. Perfect. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, there's the questions you already answered on the rules. Uh, and then the can we send the Azure firewall logs to Azure Sentinel? Yeah, I believe if we do that. Yeah, you answer that one. Yeah. So there's one came in under the new. OK, let me publish that one. This one goes uh, is this uh, processing order correct? One global network two global application three local DNAT and then fourth local network and the last one local application. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, another one just came in. Is there a documentation on how to force tunnel ASA to Azure Firewall in uh, VWA and Hub? So you can't do it in the virtual WAN Hub. You can do it in the VNet Hub. So if you're using VNet Hub, then you can configure that. 
So when you implement a firewall in the VNet hub at that moment, when, like you have, so the only time when you can configure a, 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 a firewall to do force tunneling is when you're installing it for the first time. So that is the key. So when you're installing the firewall, uh, you configure it in the force tunneling mode and then you convert your VNet hub, uh, VNet to a VNet hub to manage with Azure Firewall Manager. Okay, perfect. And I think uh, that uh, concludes uh, everything I'm sharing here with the folks uh, our uh, security community webinars. Uh, we are wrapping up with the Azure Network uh, next week. We have back to back. In fact, we have uh, webinars Monday through Thursday. So if you have not uh, registered yet, please do so by visiting us at uh, aka.ms slash security webinars. And uh, in case we missed to answer your questions or if you have additional questions, you can visit us on our Azure Network Security Forum at uh, AKMS Azure Network Security Community. And let me just share those links once again with you guys. Um, uh, I would like to close this uh, webinar by thanking Ashish for another awesome presentation. And I think you have another one next week, right Ashish? Yes, so Sorry, we're going to be discussing the uh, uh, architecture or advanced reference architecture for Azure Network Security. Perfect, looking forward to that. And of course, uh, thank you to the rest of the team who helped uh, answering the questions. And most of all, I want to thank all of you for being part of our community and for joining us on these webinars. We hope to see you next time and I appreciate your feedback on the polling side. Thank you. Goodbye.